Okay, we're back, folks, and I think we have David Paul on the line. Doc, are you there? Yes, Larry, I'm here. How are you, sir? I am very good. I have told the folks a little bit about you, but uh, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us, uh, I know you're a major uh, proponent of VectorVest, which you showed us in London, which was great, but tell us a little bit about yourself, and then when we're done with that, I'd like for you to tell the folks how you turned uh, Thomas into such a super trader, because the people in London <laughs> really loved that. I mean, uh, it was really well, amazing. I think, I think Go ahead. Tom did you most of that himself, but... Uh, yeah. Ah, no, 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 no. He gives yeah. you too much credit for that. Go ahead, my friend. Ah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, folks, I've been, uh, I've got a PhD in mechanical engineering. Well, a PhD in mathematics, first degrees in mechanical engineering. Uh, prior to that, I was a Royal Marine officer, uh, and uh, I went to South Africa in 1981 uh, from London to play rugby, to play professional rugby. And uh, uh, I worked for De Beers, the diamond people at the time, and uh, I was billeted into an office with an old fellow uh, who was something, doing something very strange every morning. Every morning by hand, he would update 50 or 60 shares that he was following on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, and he was making good money. He was trading primarily technically, uh, and uh, uh, I started to do the same, and I put on my first trade in uh, October 1982. I traded while working at De Beers until uh, 1988, uh, and then I cut the corporate umbilical cord, and I've been trading on my own ever since. Uh, uh, over the last, uh, I think, for the first 20 or so years, Larry, I was purely a technical trader, uh, and uh, I did my best to try and keep the fundamentals of the stock market under control using William O'Neill's uh, Canslim methodology. but. I didn't have the skills, uh, and I didn't have the time, and I didn't have the inclination. So in the first years, I traded pretty much just technically and did fine. And then I tripped over the Vector Best program about 10 years ago that does all the fundamentals for you. Uh, and I originally uh, represented Vector Best in South Africa. And uh, then they asked me, uh, we built it up, my son and I built it up from nothing in South Africa, and they asked me to do the same thing in the UK. So three years or so, uh, I came home to London, uh, and uh, I've been working with retail traders here in London, uh, showing them how to actually put uh, technical analysis together in uh, the very, very best shares, shares that are growing their earnings uh, strongly and, uh, and safely. So uh, that's what I'm uh, doing these days. I've managed money professionally in South Africa for quite a long time. Uh, but at the moment, my objective, sir, is to be making a good, in my dotage, to make a good living out of uh, swing trading in the stock market. Uh, and uh, I, I day trade when I feel like it. I day traded yesterday. I, I'm, uh, I'll see what I feel like this afternoon. Uh, I've got a bit of a cold on me today. And as I think, as you know better than anybody, you've got to be uh, uh, feeling good uh, to take the people on in the afternoon so well that or afternoon your morning should I say so I've been in market since uh, 1982 uh, I've done training for pretty much all the banks around the world uh, especially in Southeast Asia all over Africa uh, if you can find some uh, any small little place in Africa I haven't been there I'd be surprised uh, so mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Tom came to one of my seminars away back in uh, it was in Johannesburg uh, 10 or 12 years ago, and uh, we struck up a friendship, and we worked together at the Which Way Today live trading room for a long time. We nearly killed ourselves in there. Uh, <laughs> I uh, remember. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, and uh, at the moment, I'm quite happy uh, uh, to try and uh, focus on making a really good living trading markets on my own, okay? Uh, so that's what I do. Uh, so, uh, I, 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 I put together a, can you see the slide, Larry? Uh, I don't know if we can or not. I think Al will be able to tell us if we can or not. Yeah, he does see it. Yep. We, uh, I think, well, uh, the, the, yeah, the reason, we can see it. The reason right that, uh, the reason that, uh, the, the slide is entitled, why is this so darn difficult? Uh, and, uh, uh the reason is, uh, these clusters that we have now, uh, 
If you've got a trend following system, you you mentioned the turtles a moment ago, the breakout system, any breakout system or simple moving average crossing system, you're going to be really lucky if you've got a 50% hit rate. Uh, depends very much where you put your stop. It depends very much. I know where you, in fact, uh, uh, put your target. Uh, but if you've got a uh, trading system that makes more when it's right than it loses when it's wrong, a positive expectancy system, uh, as a trend follower, you're going to be really lucky if you're right half the time. That means that uh, you get a bad one every two trades. And uh, as I've got in the slide there, you get six you get four bad ones in a row every 16. Uh, five bad ones in a row every 32 trades. That is a mathematical certainty. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you, in fact, are dumb enough to bet 20% of your kitty on any one trade, you go bankrupt every five. How is that? So, and and many people, of course, do this, uh, and uh, I see it all the time. I see it all the time. So uh, at VectorVest here in the UK, I spend, I would think, about half my time reinforcing position sizing uh, and uh, talking and talking about uh, Ralph Vince and Ralph Vince's work. Uh, did you know Ralph Vince? Uh, yes, of course I do. Yes, uh, he's yeah. a nice fellow. Yeah, very bright yeah, fellow, of course. Yeah, a very bright fellow. That's for sure. Uh, now, uh, if you can push your hit rate up a little bit uh, to 66 out of 100, in other words, you're wrong uh, one out of three. Uh, you only got to handle five clusters in a row, five bad ones in a row every 250 trades. Uh, if you can, uh, if you can, uh, sort of push your hit rate up. Uh, to mystical levels, 8 out of 10, then you only have uh, to handle 5 bad ones every 3,000 trades. So if you can sit in your hands and wait for those plums of opportunity to come along, then emotionally the uh, business becomes an awful lot easier. But uh, mm -hmm. doing nothing, as I keep preaching to the vector S people, doing nothing is much, much more difficult than it would seem. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, 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 so uh, now, where what I spoke to Tom about ten or thirteen years ago came from uh, came from uh, a course that I did in gambling. Believe it or not, it was a it was called a, a Vegas MBA, and the chap who was running it. Uh, said that if you can look Vegas straight in the eye, well, uh, making money in business is going to be a piece of cake. So uh, we went <laughs> off to Vegas for two weeks uh, to gamble and to learn how to gamble professionally. It was great fun. It really was great fun. Uh, on the roulette wheel, as you know, there are red and black, and the same number of reds and blacks. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a little white ball. In England, we've only got one white ball. I believe you've got two across there. Uh, so, and that's the house edge. That's the spread. Mm -hmm. But if you stand at that roulette wheel and you have a quick look, you'll see that there's long runs of blacks and long runs of reds. Exactly what I've just tried to show in this particular slide. Hey, Dave, uh, stay with us here for one second. We've got to take a break, okay? Uh, Since we were late getting on today, could you come on next week, maybe uh, on one day, this, uh, you know, for, for, so we can talk about that uh, heads tails experiment that I really enjoyed so much? Uh, yeah, by all means, by all means, okay, it'd be a let pleasure. Me what day, let me let me know what day fits in. Go ahead and continue, please. All right. Well, uh, uh, the clusters are real, folks, and the first thing about the clusters you got to, in fact, live through. And that's a trading record of one of the, the best traders I know in the city of London. He, he manages billions uh, of uh, pounds. And as you can see, uh, at least I hope you can see, uh, long runs of greens, and then you've got a few reds. He's got a 66% hit rate, this guy. Uh, makes a lot of money, trades huge positions uh, in uh, bonds, uh, stock indices, oil, and gold. Uh, and he's up 42% with a huge account. Uh, that was till we did our seminar together. Uh, so the first thing about the clusters is to get through them mathematically, that you don't go broke in them. Uh, and of course, the second thing about the clusters is to try and get your way through them emotionally, putting your trading system into practice perfectly 
after three or four bad ones, uh, it takes a great deal of what I call, Larry, testicular fortitude, uh, sir. Uh, so um, uh, so a 50% hit rate is good, and I don't care what methodology you've got, folks. Every now and then, that market's just going to go in to a complete knot, and you'll be lucky if you get a 50% uh, hit rate. So uh, this uh, is... Uh, what, how Tom and I uh, got started in this, folks. Uh, if you look at a martingale system, uh, which uh, is a system every time you win, uh, you put the same bet on. So if you're playing roulette and you win, a t you put a $10 bet on red and you win, you get $10 and you put the same bet on. Uh, if you yeah, hey, Dave, we've got to yeah. we got to leave now, and time's up. And we'll get you next week, okay? And continue on. This is really great stuff, Dave. Thank you All so right. much. You bet. Cheers, Larry. Dr. David care, Paul from, you bet, from the UK. We'll be back with him next week. See you all tomorrow, folks.